In 1945, an ex-military man just returned from World War II. Folks called him Mr. Sam. He had a vision for providing customers with low prices and great service. And Sam Walton purchased a small variety store in Bentonville, Arkansas. The store was a five and dime franchise called Ben Franklin Stores. Sam and his wife, Helen, expanded with more stores throughout the area, and most were called Walton's Five and Ten. This is the history of Walmart. If you're curious about the history of anything, subscribe here, put your request in the comments, and you can see your video on the next All Request History. The post-war landscape of rural America proved to be a retailer's paradise, with the expansion of innovative products like electronics, appliances, fashion and toys, Home decor, Walton stores became the go-to places for young family shoppers. Helen and Sam were successful for 20 years. In 1962, they decided to open their own store in addition to their Ben Franklin franchises. One of their store managers, named Bob Boggle, came up with the name for the new store, Walmart. By 1964, the Waltons were opening their third store in Arkansas. By the end of the decade, Waltons owned close to 50 stores in the Midwest. A record six stores were built and opened in one year, 1968. They were now looking at a total of $12.6 million in annual sales. By 1970, the stores began to not only lead the retail world, but also expanded the in-store experiences by providing additional goods and services like pharmacies, jewelry, and car care. 1970 was also the year Walmart went public on the stock market, with shares starting at $15 each. In only one year, by 1971, the stock prices rose to $47 each. As of this recording in March of 2024, the stock price is now $169.30 per share. By the end of 1979, there were 276 stores nationwide, 21,000 employees, and $1.24 billion in annual profit. The 80s saw Walmart producing its own brands. One of the first Walmart-branded products was started after Sam's favorite hunting dog passed away in 1981. Sam honored his best friend by marketing dog food with his English setter's image on the package and naming it after Ol' Roy. Today, Old Roy is still one of the best-selling food products in the United States. In the early 80s, Walmart dropped its original wagon wheel style logo and introduced a fresh new look. The first Sam's Club store opened in 1983. Now, Sam Walton wanted to help fellow entrepreneurs access the products and services they needed to start their own businesses, so he launched a members-only wholesale store. Today, they continue the members-only store, operating 600 locations to 69 million members. It's the third largest in the U.S. behind only Costco and Amazon. 1983 introduced the friendly greeter at the front doors of every Walmart location. By 1989, Walmart now operated 1,528 stores, 275,000 associates, and 26 billion in annual sales. In 1990, the original location became a museum. You can visit the Walmart Museum in Bentonville Square, Arkansas today. The 90s saw expansion in all 50 states, but it also extended out of the U.S., opening stores in Mexico City, Puerto Rico, Argentina, China, Brazil, Germany, and South Korea. In 1985, Forbes magazine named Sam Walton the richest man in America. But he always remained somewhat humble. He tried to stay away from a lavish lifestyle. In fact, Sam's daily driver for 20 years was his beloved 1979 Ford F-150. Sam died in 1992, and his son, Rob Walton, became the company's CEO in that same year. In 1999, Walmart became the largest employer in the world, with a total of 1,140,000 associates. The 2000s, Walmart established the Together We Stand campaign and donated $15 million to relief organizations for the 9-11 tragedy, also contributing $18 million 
with truckloads of supplies to victims of Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita. Also, U.S. wildlife conservation and reducing carbon footprints is high on their list by implementing the reusable bag program worldwide. In fact, in 2005, Walmart CEO Lee Scott announced the company's sustainability goals of creating zero waste and use only renewable energy in every one of its stores. The growth of the company continued, as did the accolades. They received not only philanthropic awards, but also achievement in employee relations, diversity recruitment programs, and corporate patriotism awards recognizing support for the U.S. military families. On April 19, 2007, Helen Walton, the matriarch of the Walmart legacy, passed away. 2008, the logo changed yet again to the Spark logo and still remains today. In 2010, Walmart contributed $2 billion to help end hunger in the U.S. with their Fighting Hunger Together program. Fun fact, Walmart has its own radio station. From the early 90s to the 2010s and in 2016 brought back Walmart radio. The DJs for the station, well, they're found from a nationwide search from store associates. From its humble beginnings to its global presence, Walmart's journey embodies the spirit of America entrepreneurship and innovation. 